if you've ever gone to hook up a piece of equipment and realized you have nowhere to plug these into, or you want to add a grapple or a third function to an existing front end loader, then hang out and I'm going to show you how to do just that. Now if you have something like a tractor and you've already got one set of hydraulic remotes on the back, there are other devices you can purchase which will split that one set into two. If you don't have anything like that, this is what you need. This is a selector valve. So what you're going to do is find a set of hydraulic hoses on your unit that you want to share with another device. I've chosen to use these two lines right here. These run up to the front of my skid steer and they run the tilt cylinders. These are what make your pallet forks, you know, tilt or your bucket dump. Um, those are the ones we're going to share. So not only will they do that, but when I push a button, when I have my grapple on, it will also pinch. And the way this is going to work, we're going to take those hydraulic lines and instead of them going straight from the pump to those tilt cylinders, we're going to add two new lines that will go from the pump over here and they will come straight through, right out the other side, off to the tilt cylinder. Just like normal, nothing's changed. But then, when I push my button, it will fire this relay right here and shift uh, a valve inside of here and the fluid will come in and then come out here to my auxiliary hydraulics. It will no longer come out these two, it will come out the two on the top. Thus, giving you an extra feature, a third function. Now, obviously, if, if I want to dump while I'm trying to clamp the grapple, I can't do that. But for what I'm trying to do, that's not too big of a deal to me. I'm, this is about the easiest way to possibly get done what I'm trying to do, I think. So. Alright, we've hit a technical difficulty. So I got the first elbow threaded in, go to thread in the second elbow, and it hits. All six of them have the same problem. So I'm going to have to see if I can get some extended head elbows that will be tall enough that will, you know, when they're threaded in all the way, they'll still be, you know, up at that height and clear the front one. Alright, it's literally been 30 seconds. I pulled my surplus center catalog out of the drawer, and we found exactly what we need. Right here. GIC size 8 to SAE size 8. It'll be $3.90 a piece. Need three of those. So, here we go. The, it should be here it's Sunday if I place the order today. It should probably be here Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest. So. so these ones right here are the ones I purchased that are too short. These ones I just showed you. And I realized right below it they've got extra long. So it doesn't give dimensions um, in, in the catalog. But on the website you type in the part number and it will give you much more detail. I mean exact dimensions for everything. So we'll have to measure these up and go inside and uh, see exactly what we need. Moment of truth. That <laughs> thing's a lot taller. And yep, that should be just fine. It doesn't even come close to hitting. That's exactly what we need. Surplus center comes through again. Well, I think that plans out. This elbow is going to hang off the side over here, and I definitely don't want hydraulic lines hanging off over here. I know I'm going to rip them off. So I think I'm going to see if I can't tuck it in, maybe like this, and shoot the line straight down in, and hopefully I've got room for all that. We'll find out, but, hmm. It's always something, isn't it? All right, well, it's been a few months since the first half of this video. I kind of quit filming and just got the project done because I needed to use my grapple, but I've got so many questions on how I actually made it work that I thought it was about time that I came back and finished the series. So I ended up installing it with the, uh, the corner of the valve here, and these elbows hang off the side of the skid steer, and I didn't like that. So I made this steel bracket that went around it. It's made out of 3 16 plate, and that's worked out well. I've had no issues with it. And um, like I explained in the first half of the video, Two of these lines come off and go down to the pump, and then two of them, which actually that would be these two here and these two here, uh, the other two go to the uh, the cylinder, these steel lines up here, 
just like from the factory. And normally your fluid comes out, flows straight through that and back up to the uh, steel lines here on the cylinder. Now the difference is when I hit the switch up in the cab to run this valve, the fluid comes out of the pump into the valve and then it comes out the top here and it follows these hoses back up. And right now they're just kind of draped here. This is still never got finished. I've been using it like this and I've been meaning to do something with it and I haven't. But they come down and they're just bungee tied to the front here. And then that supplies hydraulic fluid here. So that's it. This valve is the secret to everything. And to power it, you can see the wiring kind of runs in there. That was temporary too because I knew I was going to add these lights on the back. And I just installed these the other day. So now I'm going to make the wire harness go in the back corner here or along the back of the cab, which will meet up with the factory harness that runs along over here. And then I can follow the factory harness right there up inside the dash up here. And then you can see these wires thing inside here. I'm going to get something more permanent than zip tying them there, but for now that works. What that is, it's an extension cable for uh, like my battery minder, a little battery charger. And I took that and I cut it in half and I will show you why. This pedal here is how I operate the valve. So to make it work, I just depress the pedal and that fires the solenoid inside the, uh, the valve and switches the fluid around. And that brings me back to the extension cord here. You can see it's just one of those two lead cords. Well, I cut it in half and I wired half of it into the pedal and I took the other end and wired it into the cab. So then all I do is I just plug them back together and this pedal doesn't have to stay in there. I just throw it in when I'm using it. I pull it out when I'm not and it's not in there in the way. It works out wonderfully. That way there's nothing uh, sitting down here because there's not a ton of space in these older skid stairs on the floor. It's a little tight down there and I didn't want it in there all the time if I wasn't using it. So that's what I've done and it's worked out well for me so far. Um, that's all I can think to tell you. These are pretty straightforward. The instructions aren't the greatest. I mean, they don't really come with any. You can Google it and try and figure out what you're doing. But the principle is very simple. You're just taking a hydraulic supply and adding a bypass for it to go somewhere other than the factory um, usage. In this case, it's a grapple. You could put it on a tractor for a, uh, like a hydraulic top link on your three point or for a, uh, a grapple on your front end loader on a tractor. You could use it to add a hydraulic thumb on a backhoe, anything like that. So many different uses for this. They're really handy. They're not that bad to install if you're, you know, even remotely handy. You just got to get online, figure out what parts you need and uh, just go about doing it. Hopefully that answers a couple questions about how I added auxiliary hydraulics on my uh, skid steer. If you guys have more questions, please drop down in the comments and let me know. I will try and make it more clear. I know this was not the best video, um, but thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe, stick around for the next video and I'll see you then. Thanks. Mm -hmm.